So the next talk will, uh, was prepared by Nan Kao and Yuru Lin. Yuru Lin will present. And it's about whisper tracing the spatial temporal process of information diffusion in real time. Long title. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thanks, Max. Uh, uh, it's really my pleasure to presenting our little project here. I'm uh, Yuru Lin and I'm from uh, Northeastern and Harvard Universities. Uh, my background is computer science, and I'm interested in study social network and political networks, as well as uh, computational and visualization methods for network data mining. And here is a, a little project, uh, Whisper, uh, for tra tracing the spatial temporal process of information diffusion in, in real time. And I work with my colleague, Nan Chao. So the question we are asking uh, here in this project is, how does an idea or uh, a piece of information spray on social media? And uh, social media like Twitter has been increasingly used for exchanging information, uh, ideas and uh, opinions and uh, uh, emotions about uh, events that are happening across the world. So for example, I log on uh, Twitter and I search for uh, earthquake. I see a bunch of tweets and uh, I can see uh, a tweet that's uh, information about a uh, 5.0 earthquake. And I also see a user retweet about an idea about uh, earthquake. And in Twitter, uh, retweet is that you tag some uh, tweets that, were po that was posted by someone else, and then you rebroadcast the same message to your friends or followers. Okay, another idea is that I search for Me Romney and uh, I get a bunch of uh, tweets about Me Romney. And, uh, okay, I see information about uh, Me Romney. It says uh, Jeb, Jeb Bush endorsed Me Romney. And the user also gave uh, her uh, comments on what's happening. But uh, what I cannot see here is um, whether this idea will be uh, retreated, and where and how it will be retreated. So the idea behind this project is to capture the key characteristic of information diffusion, when, where, and how the ideas are dispersed. And uh, that would include the temporal trend, uh, social spatial extent, and community response. And the, the main challenge of uh, this uh, would be uh, how can we summarize the information diffusion process to facilitate pattern detection and comparison? And we can further uh, break, break it down into several questions. How can we deal with huge amount of microblogging data in real time? How can we present the diffusion processes by considering uh, temporal, spatial topic, and community information? And eventually, what can we discover? So we propose uh, the Whisper system as uh, a solution to the challenges. And the goal of Whisper is to uh, visualize when, where, and how the ideas are dispersed. And here is the uh, system overview of Whisper. Uh, data gathering. So uh, the system will collect the, the tweets in real time through uh, Twitter API. And uh, because there's only 10% of the tweets that uh, have the uh, geolocation information. So we recover the uh, geolocation uh, by utilizing the Google Geolocation API and then store the tweets in a, a SQL-like database and rendering, because the data can be enormous, so we need uh, uh, efficient online layout algorithms to visualize the data in real time. So I would uh, talk about this later in more details. And interactions, the systems allows users to do online monitoring, and it has uh, uh, interface uh, that allow user to do temporal exploration, spatial zoom, and user can specify a query keywords and further refine the queries. So how can we represent the diffusion processes? So we, we need a language. So, 
So uh, our visual design is based on this uh, sunflower ma uh, visual metaphor. So let's decompose the sunflower. A uh, sunflower is composed by thousands of uh, disk flow rate uh, in a circular head, uh, surrounded by the ray flow rates. And uh, the immature uh, disk flow rates are on the center, uh, surrounded by uh, mature uh, disk flow rates. And then the disk flow rates will become seeds that can be uh, dispersed through uh, wind, uh, animals, or people. So to mimic the sunflower, uh, we put a toppy disk uh, on the center that will look like a uh, uh, disk flow rate uh, in a circular head. And this disk are uh, surrounded by the diffusion pathway, uh, which will look like uh, ray flow rates. And then the pathways are surrounded by the user groups. Uh, users can be grouped by their geolocation, like countries, uh, states, and cities. And the trees are emerged from the center in the uh, top disk. Like the immature and mature uh, disk flow rates, we put uh, inactive tweets in the center surrounded by the active tweets. So tweets become active when they are uh, starting getting at least one retreat. And we put uh, the retreats um, on, on top of the diffusion pathway. So the retreats will move from the top disk to the user groups. And the ring of the top disk represents the current time. And outside the ring uh, will represent uh, some time in the history. And the colors are re uh, including the tree colors and uh, the user group colors represents the sentiment. Uh, green for positive, uh, red for negative, and yellow for neutral. And the size will represent the expected influence of the users. Um, so uh, that will include the tree size and the user group size. And the expected in influence uh, can be uh, captured by the number of followers. And the shape of tweets represents the type of users. And a square for media outlets and circle for normal users. So then you know what uh, what tweets are important because uh, you can look at the media outlets or uh, users with uh, larger influence. Okay. So since an active tweets can generate a, a sequence of retweets, so when mouse over an active tweets, uh, the diffusion series will be shown. Uh, to illustrate who retweets whom and when. And here's the, the user interface of the entire Whisper system. You can highlight a tweet and uh, the content of the tweets will be shown, plus the diffusion series of the particular tweets will be shown in the button. And the tweet panels shows the incoming tweets in real time. And the timeline over here shows the uh, volume of data uh, coming over time and the uh, average uh, sentiments of each time window. And you, users, uh, you can specify the uh, user topic filter to determine the subset of data to be displayed. And uh, you can click on the user group to zoom in into the, the uh, detail about the user groups. OK, you can pick a different layout and then specify a different query keywords. OK, so now I'm showing you a video to demonstrate the key functionality of Whisper. Uh, Real-time monitoring. So you can do real-time monitoring. For example, I can monitor on the keyword Obama. And then, uh, then the tweets about Obama start coming in, and you can do an interaction on, on your data. Uh, the tweets are gathered and visualized in real time. And um, you can change it. The, the layout into uh, longitude layout. So the users are layout based on the longitude information. And um, you can click, uh, uh, you can mouse over the tweet to see the content of a particular tweet. And then wait for the data coming in. 
because it's a real-time uh, monitoring. Um, and then you start seeing there are different kinds of sentiments about Obama uh, when, when we were recording this vi video. And you can uh, click a, a, a particular tweet to see how the uh, spatial, uh, uh, what's the spatial uh, diffusion pattern of a particular tweet. And since uh, the tweets were retreated by different uh, countries, including USA, Japan, uh, and different countries, so you can zoom in, uh, click the, the, the uh, particular country, and then the user group will change to a state, um, and you can either zoom in to a particular city, and then zoom out to see the global view of the, the spatial pattern. And you see on the bottom is a, a, a volume of the data. Also, you can uh, uh, load, the re, uh, load the data that you recorded earlier and do re-exploration of the, the data. So here is uh, earthquake uh, data. Uh, it's, uh, it's about a Japan earthquake. And we will talk about this example later. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you a, a brief uh, overview about the day out. And since the, the data is coming in real time and can be enormous, so we need an uh, efficient day out and we need to uh, reduce as much as possible the visual clutter in order to uh, di display uh, the data. So uh, for day out, we first lay out the topic disk and then uh, the user group and then we draw the diffusion pathway to connect topic disk and uh, user group. And then in the final step, we reduce the visual clusters. So uh, for topic disk, we lay out this uh, topic disk uh, through, uh, based on this sunflower packing algorithm. And for user group, um, we lay out the user groups. We can lay out the user group in the outer ring of the circle in equal distance. And when the user were grouped by their geolocation, we can uh, lay out the, the user group based on uh, longitude information. And within each user groups, the tweets can be laid out using a uh, Verona EO uh, sunflower packing algorithms. What? Okay, and the diffusion path line, uh, were, uh, were, uh, diffusion path line are drawn uh, on the diffusion field, and this is based on the idea or the concept of electric fields. So we consider a bipartite graph. The two modes were topic disk nodes and the user groups. And we put positive charges on the topic disk and put negative charges on the user groups. And then we draw the uh, diffusion path line as flux lines. And the flux line has uh, two key properties. Um, one is that the lines are repelling from each other. And the other is the lines have tension to make themselves shorter. So you can then reduce uh, uh, much uh, edge crossing of the flux lines. Um, I'm sorry, it's... Okay, okay and in the final uh, step, we, we uh, further reduce the visual clutter, so we can so uh, to reduce the edge crossing, we can reorder the uh, position of the active tweets. And then we put a force model here and then rotate the topic decks in order to shorten the flux line. So finally, what can we discover with Whisper? So here is the example about the 6.8 uh, magnitude, magnitude earthquake in Japan in uh, March two, 2012. So we can use uh, Twitter to trace, uh, no, Whisper, to trace this uh, diffusion uh, about this earthquake. So this is a screenshot about the, the 
um, tweet, tweets that are coming in. And you can see uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, retreats about this earthquake going to different countries. And uh, Japan, uh, most of the information were related to Japan. And there are different kinds of uh, sentiments going to uh, different places. Um, specifically, we can see uh, negative tweets like uh, uh, users from Australia. Uh, they were worried about the, the tsunami that caused by the earthquake. And uh, positive uh, sentiment, like uh, users from Philippines, they were celebrating the, the safety of a, a celebrity here. And we can see trends and burst. So for example, you can see uh, a sequence of continuous uh, earthquake report were announced and retreated from Japan. And you can also see uh, multiple tweets uh, were uh, retreated at the same time from friends. And we also monitor the new iPad release in March. And you can see there were a lot of tweets pretty dense because Apple's friends are coming all over, over the world. And you can zoom in into a particular country and then zoom in into, to see uh, the, the interest from different communities. And uh, we can also trace the media and the opinion leaders. So we monitor the 2012 uh, Republican prim primary on Super Tuesday. So if you were, uh, remember that the Ohio State uh, election is pretty uh, intense. So until mid midnight, people don't know uh, who win the election. So AP is the first, that, first media outlets that uh, report the Romney's victory. And you, you can see it got a lot of retreat from, uh, from many, many states. And you can see the spatial patterns about uh, this uh, diffusion. And here's another uh, media outlet, WSJ, that retreat the same message after AP. And it got a very different uh, spatial uh, diffusion pattern. And also opinion leaders uh, uh, were also commenting these uh, events, like uh, Congresswoman uh, Scouts, uh, she made uh, negative comments on, on this uh, Romney uh, victory. And you can also compare the diffusion series about uh, different uh, media and uh, compare the, uh, visualize the temporal uh, patterns about media, uh, opinion leaders. So in summary, uh, the thing uh, I'm, I'm going to highlight here is that Whisper is a real-time interactive visualization for monitoring and exploring the information diffusion from microblogging data. And the visual design is used the uh, Sunflower uh, metaphor. And uh, we, we, we conduct an evaluation for this and then get uh, pretty nice results. And here are a bunch of uh, next steps we are working on. And special thanks to Lazar Lab and uh, Professor Isabel Mezzorio. And uh, my InfoViz uh, co-author. And this paper has been recently accepted in the InfoViz this year. And uh, OK, thanks. much. Um, we're a little bit tight in time, so while uh, Aliyah um, attaches the computer, I would say one question. So, anyone? So, okay. So, I have one question, actually. Um, at the New York Times Research Lab, uh, Charles Thorpe did something very similar, um, um, and it's used at New York Times uh, by journalists to actually um, investigate the popularity and uh, basically the, the effect of their own articles. Could you imagine, um, or are you already collaborating with people um, where people use something like that? So are you in contact with people who would actually use that? So, or is this is just an experiment? Or are you, are you, what is the key audience? Is it journalists? Is it regular people? Is it? Yeah, we think the, the key audience. Oh, we think the key audience would be the journalist and the political analyst and the but I think uh, people have been trained uh, more, have more and more visual literacy to do uh, data uh, analytical work. And then I think uh, there are a lot of like uh, geeky users <laughs> that would uh, like to use this, yeah. Okay, um, let's thank Guru again.